Hey, what's up guys? This is Gary coming back to you from the Ramsey Custom Shop. We're on site today, different location. And uh, we were asked, actually we're just around the corner from where the shop is, just not even a mile. And uh, the guys that did my concrete for the paint booth needed some help. Uh, they're, they put an addition on this uh, small little house here. You can see where the siding starts. All this is new and this is going to be a carport. And they needed some uh, some stick, some thick structural posts to, uh, you know, support the outer edge of the carport here. And so they brought me some, uh, I believe it's quarter inch four by four posts. And I cut these to length. These need to be 85 and seven eighths. And then I came up with the uh, corner brackets that you see there and TIG welded all those in. So let's head back to the shop and I'll show you how I did this. All right, guys, uh, I was gonna do a video for you here today and uh, take you along on this one. It's uh, a neighbor down the street. Uh, actually, the guys that did my concrete slab for the paint booth uh, have asked me to help them out with this one. And so they need some uh, support columns for a carport and um, so they're gonna use this uh, four inch uh, pipe here. And um, it's uh, looks like quarter wall or maybe three sixteenths wall. I can't, uh, I haven't put a measurement on it. Maybe it is quarter wall. And so um, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. They, uh, they need uh, some mounting flanges to go on either end of it. Um, and one flange gets an L shape that's gonna go in the corner and it's gonna have two holes in each one. And then, um, and then also a um, the other end is just going to have a, a cross flange, you know, that'll be 12 inches across, and uh, it'll have two holes, two sets of holes on either side. Uh, we're going to put five eighths holes for uh, clearance on a half inch uh, for half inch uh, lag screws going into the wood and concrete. I guess some kind of concrete fasteners uh, going into the uh, into the slab. So um, it's got to be 80, 85 and 7 eighths total length after um, the plates are on the end of it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, cut these at 85 inches because my, or I'm sorry, 85 and a half, and we need to allow 3 eighths of an inch for the two 3 sixteenths plates uh, thickness wise on each end. So um here's a piece i've got a couple of 3 16th drops i told him i would use for them I've got one right there that i think is going to be good enough we'll get it up on the plasma table and if i can't get what i need out of that then i've got um a few more little drop sections here that are 3 16th so um let me get going here and i'll set you guys up and take you along All right, before we make these cuts, I'm going to check the squareness of the uh, blade because I want to get these, you know, really square if I can. And recently I was uh, cutting some modder, so I want to make sure I got my saw back up into square position there. All right, so we got that uh, squared up, and um, so we're going to cut both ends of these just to make sure we get a nice uh, true square end, even though one of them's got a decent cut in on it, the other one is uh, flame cut. looking for an overall of 85 and 7 eighths so
take a look and see uh, we got the 85 inches or 85 and a half I should say all right let's see how close to 85 and a half inches we got man I got a big mess in here working on the paint booth and all that has been uh, time consuming so it's pretty good right there maybe just a I don't know a 64th under but um, I would rather come up I don't know what the tolerance is on this but I'd rather be on the uh, minus side than the plus side on uh, making these uh, posts so I'm gonna get the other one set up and cut it I'm gonna show that I'm gonna just do that off camera and then uh, next thing you know we'll be cutting some stuff on the plasma table the brackets to go on it got a big mess everywhere in the shop All right, so we got our brackets uh, cut out, and I'm um, just gonna get these fitted up on here and <clears throat> take a look at them, get them bumped around into place, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we got it all clamped, so we will uh, go ahead and get a few tacks on it now. Stop and get it done. We
All right, guys, that's a wrap on this one. You uh, you saw you know a lot of fidgeting around with the TIG welding there. <clears throat> of course, I could use a MIG and just bang that out really quickly, but every one of these jobs is an opportunity to get better at TIG welding. So when you really do need to TIG weld, your skills are you know where they need to be. So customer was happy and uh, you know was good to get the get the job done. In fact, the contractor he had doing this job was, you know, delaying things and really complaining about, you know, having to take the time to make those. And so that's when the customer said, well, I'll just get them made for you or I'll make them for you. And he, he had a cutting torch and a buzz box and, you know, stuff like that. He could have could have uh, knocked them out. But obviously he wanted to get it, you know, have something nice. And um, so anyway, another job completed. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you on the next video.